crack shop with a gun and was hired as, to demonstrate sell guns to the Indian territory. Yes. And Have your folks told you any of the history of the, the run of the Cherokee Strip that they may have heard of? There was one incident I was reading of that the day before the run, there was a large prairie fire in part of the Strip area. around On the Cherokee the, Strip? Yes, in the Turleton area. I have, no they haven't, but I was teach. I started teaching school in 1930 in Turleton, and I had members of the, uh, um, many of the people that made the run, I, I knew them and their children, uh, went to school to me, and I had their, uh, their parents tell them for themes of their experiences in the run, and they wrote them up, and the, and the people that told the story signed them. And I had a book full of them of about, I don't have any idea how many, for some reason or other, they disappeared on me. I don't know what happened to them. But I do have him? many of the stories in here. Yes. The book there, and who wrote them. I knew many of the of the Sooners and the history of old Tom Mann, Manfred. Well, Tom Mann was the Bill Mann's son. Tom. He was the son. Now he had the farm right across the river, where the old bridge went across, and his farm sat on the. Uh, Opposite river from old old town of Man, from the so the metal bridge running right across there. That would be on the, the north Man side, what? close to the. That'd be on the north side of the Cimarron. Yes. Close to the bridge and the Bill Taylor farm. Mm -hmm. Bill Taylor. It was the Bill Taylor farm. Yes. Bill Taylor was the first uh, master farmer in this end of the country. Yes. Sir. He was a senior master farmer as well. That's right very innovative person in the farmers. Get some of the people from Manford to tell you and they will tell you how he built that big barn he had there. Okay, I'll have to remember that. I've seen that barn many a time coming through there. Is it still there? Uh, no, sir, it's not there anymore. That was built out of timbers. It was floating. He had a trap built there at the foot of the bridge where timbers had come in that heavy little creek that went back of his farm there. Yes. And they, they guided those timbers back up in there in the lumber for that barn came from that timber thing called the oil field equipment from up around oil field oil and the, when the oil field was built, they uh, overflow would bring those rigs downstream. Hmm. And he trapped them and that's what he built that barn out of. Well I'll be that there. So uh, you don't have any recollection in those stories of the prairie fire before the run? Never heard of that. I see. That, that I might relate the story to you as we're talking here, but there was a large prairie fire the day before the run, and the, of course the grass was so tall at that time, they said the cinders were three inches thick, and uh, you couldn't distinguish the people that, because they were so dirty having made the run through all of the, the burnt grass the day before the fire. Speck Wright's grandmother was a very good friend of mine. Yes, sir. She told me about the race and, and the, that first year they were here. Said they uh, uh, they came to the location where the Greer farm is now there at uh, uh, East Durham. Yes, sir. And built the tank for them. And they built a when they first came in there, they didn't have it, it was late in the year, and they had to get shelter right quick. And in order to make shelter for them, they dug a cave back in the hill. They took straw, put over for the floor, and had an old stove that they brought in with them, out through the ceiling, 
said it was very cozy. It said they got up, one big rain came up, and when Owen, her husband, threw his feet out of the bed, uh, he lit in about six inches of water, <laughs> and they looked up at the wall. Said there was a stream of water coming down through there where a gopher hole had gone through the top of it. Said that's first running water in Oklahoma. <laughs> inside running water. Yeah, the inside running water. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's a good story. So they came in. They had. Uh, They were all farmers to begin with, and the equipment they brought with them was, of course, their backs and shovels and picks and whatever livestock they had, and always brought them long enough wheat and grain, corn. But most of them came in from the corn area, and they brought corn in with them for seed corn to break the fields out in the next spring to make a living out of them. Said, the Lord, they ran out of that all they had to eat was what they could rabbits and <coughs> that they could shoot. And uh, said our bread was corn bread and our coffee was burnt corn. Everything they ate was corn and what they ground up and they but came spring, everybody had used up all their seed corn. And they could didn't have anything to plant so they decided to go there were some Sooners living in that area at that time. I'm not going to name them. I know they were. Well, <laughs> I don't think they'd prosecute them now. <laughs> well, well, I don't think they'd prosecute them. But some of those them. ones I, I told you about were Sooners. And I had a promise when I, their kids wrote their history of their experiences here, I had a promise that as long as any of them were alive that I would not divulge their names. So well, it's nice to honor that request. I still won't do it because mm -hmm. they have children living up there now yes. at Manford and Thurl. Mm -hmm. So the result is I'm not turning the rain <laughs> I've got it written in that book, but I'm not, that book's not going to get out for the case. Uh, but anyway, they, they decided that there wasn't any place to go. I mean, there was no seed. They could plow. They had a plow and their, ho and their mules, a couple of mules, and uh, who had been living on dried pasture all winter, in pretty bad shape, no, no grain. But they decided they'd go up and visit to certain Sooners, neighbors of theirs, who had been living there for, oh, four or five years. Some of them had married uh, Indians which made them legal. Not as eligible for making the race, but legal. They were in Indian territory legally. Right. But they were not allowed to claim the land, but they did. They got the land. They went up and tried to get uh, buy seed off them and were turned down. In fact, no matter what, uh, there was some little bit of gunplay over that Sooner, uh, Sooner Boomer. You know the difference between a Sooner and a Boomer? Explain that. Well, Sooners were people who came down here years and years ago, and some of them were plain outlaws. Some of them were uh, married in with the Indian settled with the Indians and li had been living here for years while it was still Indian territory, but were not allowed to take part in the race. To, and the boomers were the ones who made a demand in Washington that they open it up and made the legal race. So that actually, in, the, in actual, the, the Sooner name, the o Oklahoma Sooners, sh should be, li be named Oklahoma Outlaws. Maybe that's why they made Because they were in here illegally. Mm. The boomers were people who uh, uh, legally came in on the race and made the race, but were not, uh, but, but it forced 
they boomed the, the opening of the territory. Can you explain, Mr. Kibbe, uh, Mr. Payne that was setting up the, the boomer towns? Is that what they, were they in Indian Territory or Oklahoma Territory? That was Oklahoma Territory. 